Okay, today I'm going to show you how to assemble and disassemble the APS Cam 870 Airsoft Shotgun. This is not a real firearm. Uh, the one I have in particular here is the Mark III, so it fires the smart shells in general. So, let's get started. First thing you're going to need is, honestly, your own two hands. You need to take off the nut for the ammo tube or the mag tube. And this might take a little bit of force, but once you get it started, it comes off pretty easily. Be careful because there is a spring holding this in place. Or not holding it in place, but underneath it. This is holding a spring in place. That's what I'm trying to say. So there's your mag tube spring. Once you get that off, I recommend racking back the bolt. And then using a small little mallet, I'm using a jeweler's hammer because it has a rubber end, and just knock the barrel out. If yours is assembled correctly, that should be a very firm fit and you won't be able to pull it apart by hand. So, there you go, barrel is out. Uh, some people have put rubber O-rings underneath this, by the way. Uh, that makes the barrel lo a looser fit, it does not make it a tighter fit. Just mount the ring directly to it. That's what it was designed for. Now that we're this far, the next thing we're going to need is the forend tool. This removes the nut that holds on your foregrip. I'm going to slide that over the mag tube and unscrew. There we go. And so that's what the mag tube nut looks like. This is very similar to disassembling a real Remington 870, by the way. There's not too much of a difference. Uh, in fact, you can get some nice fit those furniture on there. I have actual wood furniture, so. And if you were just changing the forend, you could stop here, put your new forend on, reassemble it, and that's following the steps of the letter. But we're gonna do a full disassembly, so we're gonna keep going. Next step, we're gonna remove the buttstock, or in my case, the hand grip, because I don't have a buttstock. If you have a buttstock, there's gonna be two screws to remove, take the butt pad off, and you'll be able to get to it, but there's a little six millimeter hex nut. Uh, I believe it takes a five millimeter wrench though. And you'll just want to undo it like so. It's decently long as it does hold the hand grip or buttstock on, so yeah. Okay, now we're actually getting somewhere. So I recommend Pulling that forwards, leave the the uh, hammer down, as it'll make your life just that little bit easier. But next, you're gonna want to remove this metal plate here, and I just recommend sticking something underneath the corner of it, like a pair of pliers, and lifting it out. It comes out very easily. There's not much holding in place. Okay, next you're gonna remove the trigger group pins. And so for these, I recommend having an Allen key or a push or a um, pin tool. I'm using an Allen key because they're cheap and I have one on hand. So that one is pretty loose. This one generally requires some persuasion. And so you line it up with the pin, give it a good couple wax. So you've got two identical pins here, each have a notch on either side that link into the trigger linkage. Now what you're going to do is you're going to push down, twist to the side, so you saw what I did was I pushed, so here it is, I pushed down on the front, twist to the side, and pull straight out. And then you can replace. Ah arms that hold the shells in the mag tubes. You're going to remember which side goes to which, as it only goes back together one way. And so what these guys do is they have a finger on the end that holds the shell, and then one... So this is the side that holds the shell, and then this finger goes actually into the receiver. So next thing you want to do is remove the cradle arm holder. It's held in with four little hex screws in here. So what you'll do is take an Allen key or screwdriver or whatever, 
whatever is most convenient for you and unscrew those. This is a rel relatively delicate piece. Uh, it has been known to break in earlier revisions of the Cam 870. However, I've had very few issues with mine. So, For those of you who are worried based off of the Cam 870 Mark 1, they seem to once again have improved this part in the Mark 2. Uh, your mileage may vary because I also could have just gotten lucky. So these screws are rather unique. They're really small. They've got a small little hex head on them. Once those are out, push back your bolt and it'll show you access to the bolt retention screws. Take a Phillips head screwdriver and undo those two. They're little screws that are countersunk don't lose them because they are a pain in the butt if you have to replace them. Be careful whenever you do un undo these screws also because you can strip threads and that will make your day miserable. Once you got those screws out, getting that piece out is as simple as taking a pair of pliers. It's this little metal plate right there. Take a pair of pliers on either side of it and just lift straight up and it comes right out. Now you're going to slide the bolt straight out of the receiver, bringing the cradle arms with it. And the shotgun bolt should be left there. If not, it'll fall out. And there's your actual bolt. Uh, mine looks a little different than mo most of yours probably will because I have a Mark III, so I've got the brass fittings on the front, on the back and the front. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's a full disassembly of the Cam 870. I'm gonna go grab some paper towel and we'll do a reassembly once I clean this thing a little bit. Okay, it's time for reassembly. So, if you took the mounts off of your mag tube, just simply slide them on with the notch down, like so. So you should have a flat edge on the opposing side of the notch. That's in case you just, again, it's in case you just mail this. Oh, if you left it together, it's fine too. Uh, that'll have zero effect on the rest of this. Next thing you wanna do is slide the mag tube into the cradle arm holder. And I prefer to slide it all the way back as if you were racking it. Then you'll slide the bolt onto the arms, like so. And then carefully slide that into the receiver. Then your mag tube should line up perfectly with the receiver and just slide it in by pushing it just straight in. Um, so your cradle, your cradle will be out a little bit, so you're just gonna push it while it's inside the cradle. Then, holding the bolt with your thumb down in here, slide forwards. cradle so that you can get the screws in oops and those are the little dinky screws from earlier I recommend a loose fit to begin with and then tighten them down once they're all in and your only goal here is to not cross thread cross threading will absolutely ruin your day you will have to buy a new receiver and they are not cheap So once you, once you do that, go around, make sure they're all really snug, not super tight to the point where you're gonna break the threads or strip the end of the screw or snap it, just relatively snug. The mag tube should just very lightly wiggle side to side. Okay, once you've got the bolt in, push it all the way back and put back in your bolt retention plate. So it's this little piece of metal, it's got a curve in it. You want the concave side up, and it just kind of slides right into place. It does take a little bit of alignment as it is an extremely good fit. 
There you go. And once again with these screws as well, be very careful not to strip them as it will ruin your day. So they don't need to be super tight. Okay, once you got those in, then you're gonna wanna put in your spring bars. These guys hold the shells into the mag tube. There's a little hole above the mag tube and you'll want to slide the top finger of the spring into it and then align the spring with the holes in the receiver. That way, it all fits into place. Let's see if I can get a good view of this. I don't think I'll be able to because this is a really hard thing to see. So, place them. What I like to do is take one of the pins for the um, fire control group and slide it into the one first one I get in. Then I'll get the second one in place. And I'll slide it the rest of the way through holding those pin, holding those uh, springs in place. Now what you're gonna do is, there's a little metal plate from earlier. This guy just goes right on the back here. And the springs will actually hold it in place under tension. Then you can take the body pin back out or the fire control group pin and boom, it'll hold itself together. Next, we're gonna put the fire control group in. So what I recommend doing is closing the bolt by sliding it all forwards. And then you're gonna do this in reverse of what you did last time. One thing I make note of is that the flat side is bulging out a little bit when you bring this in. So, for the flat spring that retains the shells. So you're gonna slide that into the mag tube just the tiniest bit and then twist it just a little bit. Come on. Come on. There we go. And then set her straight down into the receiver. Slide it back where the pins go and then push the pins all the way through. You might need a little bit of a tacking hammer to get them all the way through, which is how it should be. It should require a little bit of pressure. And again, just, there you go. Now you wanna make sure your fire control group is functional, so you'll want to one, pull the, if you did what I did, which is leave the hammer down, pull the trigger down, rack it, and fire again. Make sure that it cycles properly. So next is putting back on the furniture for the most part. So we'll start with the hand grip or the buttstock. Once again, you slide that over this back section right here. It should fit right into the groove. Take your Allen key. Again, I believe it's five millimeter. In fact, I can read this. Yeah, it's five millimeter Allen key. And screw her down. It is a very long screw. Next thing you're gonna do is throw your foregrip on. So the side with the V goes on first. However, depending on what variant you have, It'll be whichever side has the cutouts for the bars. Uh, Cause it's gotta clear the bars to go on. So it just slides, just slides right over the front like so. And it should fit snug and it doesn't wiggle much. Like it's only gonna wiggle against the bars. Then you'll take your forend nut, slide it over the front and take your forend tool, slide her also over and screw it down. Now you want to make this pretty snug on there. I like to have it racked back for the rest of this, so I'm racking it back. Next thing you want to put on is the barrel. And so the barrel slides 
over the end of the mag tube right here. But at first it's gonna go in the receiver. Make sure you line up the notches with their keyed positions and then slide it over the mag tube like so. And what I find is you can't get it all the way on. It does require a little bit of persuasion. I just take a little rubber mallet, or in my case, it's a, again, a jeweler's hammer. And I give it a little bit of a whack. So we're getting pretty close to the end here. Next is your follower for the mag tube. I just throw that in the end. Your mag tube spring is next. And then the nut that goes on the front of all that. Once again, um, I don't recommend the O-ring thing that other people have done where they put an O-ring at the base here. I found that made the barrel looser. Um, it did not make it tighter. Didn't fix any of that. So just put that on bare, tighten her down as well as you can. Finger tight's good, but just get it as tight as you can. And then your shotgun is reassembled and ready to use. And I recommend the test, just take a blank shell. And in fact, I'm gonna just load this with green gas real quick here, just to make sure everything's working. So take a shell, load it as a blank, load it into the mag tube, make sure it locks into place correctly. Make sure it loads, and then make sure it ejects. Once you confirmed all that works, that means that you have disassembled and reassembled your Cam 870 correctly. And now you can get back to the field. As I said, my main reason for dismantling it was I got some BBs stuck inside uh, because I had some shells that broke open while I was loading them. That is one thing to look out for and you wanna actually check after any malfunction like that you have to make sure there's no BBs inside the action as you can damage the action. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was informative for all of you. I wanted to do a video of this using the correct tools because the only videos I could find didn't and they didn't explain how to get around not having these tools, so yeah. That is the teardown of the Cam 870. I have some more content to come on this shotgun, but for today, this is all we've got. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, bye.